hello, Katie. Hello. Hello. Um, you sent me a Sudoku puzzle. Uh, I, did. I don't think I can. I don't think I can solve it. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you solve it? I can. Good. Okay. Um, so, if I can solve, if it is possible to be solved, I'd like to solve it. But I'd like to know that it is solvable first, and I don't believe you because you you lie. You've lied very recently, in fact. Um, <laughs> I also don't have scissors. That was a lie. You don't have scissors. I was hoping Paul would be on the ball and be like, she doesn't have any scissors. I should fetch her some scissors, but that didn't happen. Man, I've got scissors. Oh, I've got scissors here. <laughs> well, I just lied. I just lied on Skype, Paul. <sighs> you can't lie on Skype. I don't detect that. No. Okay. There are now, rules. Right. Do we need to start again? We can do, yeah. So um, we're going to use a zero knowledge protocol to prove that this Sudoku... So you can prove to me that this Sudoku has a solution, um, but without telling me what the solution is. So we're going to use this paper, um, Cryptographic and Physical Zero Knowledge Proof Systems for Solutions of Sudoku Puzzles. Oh, I, I didn't have that in the screen there. Right. Um, it's by Gradvol, Nara, Pincus and Rothblum, and it's excellent. And it gives a zero knowledge protocol using paper and scissors. Do you have those? I do. You do. Excellent. Um, so a zero knowledge protocol means that we can exchange information, but only the information we want. So you can answer a question, you tell me nothing about how you answer it or anything else. So the question is, is the Sudoku solvable? Um, and uh, you're not going to give me your solution. So you need some scissors. Got scissors? Yes, I have. Excellent. Got paper? I have. It's got a Sudoku on one side right. and on the back it's got the same Sudoku but seen through the paper. So the, it's actually flipped from my actual Sudoku but the numbers are all on the back of where the uh, numbers okay. on the Sudoku are. Excellent, that's step one. <laughs> um, so yes, two-sided bit of paper, very important. Sudoku on the back. So yes, you, you've turned it around, you've written the numbers on the back behind the cells that they are. This is going to yep. be important in a bit. Okay, now without showing me, can you solve the Sudoku please on one side only? Okay, I will do that. Okay. Um, so I'll explain a bit about zero knowledge protocols while you do that. Uh, often they're cryptographic, meaning they use huge numbers of prime numbers and things, and they're for situations where you need to prove you can do something without saying how, or you need to um, do something to some information without revealing some extra secret information. Um, so there's another there's another paper that I've always wanted to do, but is really difficult. It's about how to play mental poker. So we can each pick a shuffling of cards and we can play poker together without either of us knowing what the order of the deck is because there's no deck so we need to do it all in our heads so we have to know what the deck is otherwise um, there's a good paper by Quizquator and others I've forgotten what their name is called how to explain zero knowledge protocols to your children and it's a cracking read um, I don't have that so now we wait. I'm nearly there. <laughs> okay, I think I've okay. solved the Sudoku. You've solved it, right. Don't show it to me. Yeah. Now, um, I'm going to ask you to cut it up, and I can choose either that you cut up the rows, or you cut out the columns, or you cut out the the sub squares like the three by three squares from the thing okay um the fact i'm allowed to choose this prevents you from cheating in a way that i'll explain in a bit um so i'd like you to cut out the uh three by three squares please okay. i'll do that so what i expect to see when you've done that um is well actually once you've done that you'll cut each of them up into bits and I'll expect to see that each square has the numbers 1 to 9 in it. And of the cells that were filled in originally, they should have that number on the back as well. Um, oh. And the other ones should have nothing on the back. So this proves that you haven't solved some other Sudoku. Um, so each square would have 1 to 9 in it, because that's the rules of Sudoku. Um, this one corresponds completely with uh, the one I saw before. Um, oh. There is some possibility for sleight of hand here, because you could have just switched some bits of paper around while I wasn't looking. So that's a flaw in this protocol. 
I'm on video, so. You're on video. I, I can't see that bit of paper there. Oh, you can, well, you can no, have assistance kind of unknown underneath. Just. My main concern at this point is making sure I don't get them mixed up because obviously they were in yeah. nine groups of nine. And I'm going to end up with lots of very small bits of paper at some point, um, which could well be. Okay, so I've separated it into nine kind of subsquares. I'll show you the back of one. Okay, uh, very good. That's that's there. So if I now take each of these and cut them up into even yep. smaller subsquares. And you need to keep them in order. So you need to be able to say what the top left one is and top middle. And yeah, I've got that arranged on the table. So you'll have to just take my word for that. I could, in fact, tip the camera down so you can see that, which I might do in a second. No, no, because then I'll see the solution. Well, no, they're all face down. Oh, okay. I thought about that. Mm. No, that's not necessary. You just need to be able to produce them when I ask for them. That's part of the protocol. So if you're following along with the paper, we are at step E at the moment. Um, okay, I've got I've got one subsquare cut up. This is taking a insane amount of time. Yeah, I had a go at this before, and I I think cutting up the three by three squares is easier than the rows because you've right. only got to make uh, four cuts. I think. Oh uh, yeah, in theory that would be easier. Yeah. Okay, so. Right, have you you've done it? Yeah. Okay, so each you cut out each square, and each square you then cut out each number. Yes. Okay, so for the top left square, could you show me all the bits you've got? Okay, and well, I'll, I'll, sh I'll shuffle them at random so that you can't see the order of them. Oh, yes, sorry, that's important. <laughs> but I've got that one. Uh, okay, what's that? That's a one. That's a one. Now, I, I've, I haven't got a copy of the Sudoku here. <laughs> Uh, the five there. Right. Oh, you need to show me the backs of them all. Okay, so the one uh, there was blank on the back. Good. Uh, the five, there's the camera, uh, is also blank on the back. Good. Um, I've got a six there, uh, uh -huh. which has a six on the back. Good. And a three with a three on the back. And I've got a seven there, with a seven on the back. There were lots filled in in this square. There were, yeah, there were, those three were filled in, as you well know, because you've seen the puzzle. Um, <laughs> I, I suppose the first check here that this Sudoku is solvable is that it's got 17 clues. We should well, have checked yeah. that to begin with. Uh, I've got a four that's blank on the back, and okay. we should also have a nine. Nine, okay. It's blank on the back. So I've seen all nine numbers now. Yeah. Have I seen eight? I can't yes. Remember. I, I, uh, okay. I again. So that square had every bit in it. Yep. Um, if we were sat next to each other, you could have just handed me that pile of numbers so I would know you're not just picking up numbers from elsewhere in the Sudoku. So yep. maybe this doesn't work over Skype. Um, so I've seen every cell in that square. Everyone that should have something on the back did, and everything that shouldn't didn't. Yeah. So that's good. Um, should we bother going through the rest of them? It's uh, I'll attempt to do another one by sticking all nine onto my hand so that you can see them all. Oh, very good. I can tell which ones have a number on the back because they're the ones that are printed. So, for example, oh. there's the bottom right. Um, and you can see all the ones that I've written in have got handwritten Excellent. numbers okay. and the rest are printed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Yep. Excellent. So, uh, I accept grudgingly that Sudoku is solvable and that you are better at solving Sudokus than me. Okay, uh, I guess if you pick rows or columns, uh, that would have, you know, that would be a different way of checking, but there's no way I could have made it so that just the groups were right. Because I could have just filled in the numbers so that all the groups were right, but the rows and columns were wrong. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you could have picked any of those three, so obviously I couldn't, I couldn't try and fool you in that way. No. Um, protocol. Okay, so, yeah. So every... Every square you showed me, or you haven't bothered to show me the rest, but if you had shown me them, they would have the numbers 1 to 9 in, they'd all agree. And there's no way that can be the case, given that you didn't know which uh, section I was going to choose, unless you had solved the Sudoku. Yeah. So, very good. Thank you. Thank and you. I'll, and I'll try to solve it myself. Okay.
So how could you cheat at this? Well, um, this is this is quite a good protocol because it stops me from cheating by just filling the numbers in randomly. Because uh, if I did that, there would be a chance that uh, that whichever one you chose would work. Um, but because I don't know which one of the three you're going to choose, there's a one in three chance, or there's two in three chance that that might fail, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how I randomly put the numbers in. Okay. Uh, but I mean, as I say, the you know because you could have chosen any one of those three, and whichever one you choose, you then look at all of the combinations uh, to check that they've all got the numbers from one to nine in. Uh, filling it in randomly would quite often fail on that. Okay. So there is a very tiny chance you could just randomly fill this in and get the right answer, which I suppose is one method of solving Sudokus, but it's it's not the one I meant when you said, can you solve this? So we've proved this Sudoku is solvable, but not necessarily that you can solve any, any Sudoku you're given, I think. That's true. Yes. Okay. So that's the subtlety of it that we have to add at the end of the video.